Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the expression for the efficiency of the spiral gear. So spiral gear is nothing but it is the helical gear. But only thing is that in helical gear the teeth they are having helix shape means they are having straight line shape, while in the spiral they are having a smooth curvature. And so the the noise means the noise produced by the spiral gear will be less as compared to the helical gear. So in the diagram shown here, this is a pair of spiral gear one and two shown in figure. Here, this is the driver gear to which input is given, and this is the driven gear, spiral gear to which we are getting the output. Now, the forces acting on each of the pair uh, in the teeth. This is the point of contact. O is the point of contact. At this point of contact, the forces they are acting. So, what are the forces here? First is the F1 force. That is the this F1 force is acting along this axis. This axial force. F2 is another axial force. Then this is what this is the normal common normal drawn alpha one alpha two are the spiral angles for the respective gears that is driver and driven gear and phi is nothing but the pressure angle here phi is nothing but the pressure angle so f one is the force which is applied tangentially on the driver means this is the tangential force and f two is the tangential force means resisting force acting tangentially on the driven gear means uh, for the circumference means uh, for having the circular motion. This FT component is very important because if FT component is not there, then there will be no any rotary motion. And FA one and FA two they are the axial forces respectively. And this R, this R is nothing but the resultant force. If you see here, this is R is the resultant force, and this R in is the normal force which is acting. Then uh, as per the shaft angle is nothing but the angle made by the axis of both of the shafts. So it is given as alpha one plus alpha two. So from the triangle, if you see the F1 force is resolved as R into cos of alpha one minus phi, and work done by the input driver is given as force into phi d1 n1 by 60 means this is the uh, circular velocity, circumferential velocity for the driver, and this is the circumferential velocity for the driven. And efficiency is nothing but you know what is efficiency? Efficiency is nothing but the ratio of output upon input. So this is the work output to the work input. So by putting these values of the work input for the driver and driven, you will get this expression of cos of alpha two plus phi into d two by n two upon cos of alpha one minus phi into d one n one. So now, in order to get the piece circle diameter for the first gear, you know the formula is what P C D is equal to piece circle diameter into number of teeth upon phi. So this for the first gear, driver gear, and this for the driven gear. By equating that values to the diameter ratio, you will get the speed ratio as n2 by n1 is equal to t1 by t2. Now putting these values in the first third equation, you will get d2 n2 upon d1 n1 is equal to cos alpha 1 upon cos of alpha 2. So by substituting these values, you will get in the first expression instead of d2 n2 you have to insert cos alpha 1 and d1 n1 you have to insert cos alpha 2. So what is cos of a plus b? It is now we have to put this value in that terms. Means what? Alpha two phi alpha one plus alpha two plus phi, and alpha one minus alpha two minus phi. So this is the expression of cos a cos b is what? One by two cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b. This is the trigonometric ratio we have to use in this expression. And now these values will be equal to what? What is theta? Theta is nothing but the summation of all the helix angle. That is alpha one plus alpha two. So cos of theta alpha one plus alpha two is theta. So theta plus phi, and rest of the things will be same. Now this angle theta and phi they are constant, so the efficiency will be maximum when alpha one minus alpha two minus phi will be maximum. So when the cost value is maximum, when cost value is zero, so you have to put this term equal to zero so that alpha two equal to alpha one minus phi and alpha one equal to alpha two plus phi. So these are the maximum in order to get the maximum angles pressure uh, or helix angle. Now you have to put this expression as alpha one equal to theta plus phi by two and alpha two equal to theta minus phi phi by two. So these are the uh, axiom angles made by the teeth with respect to axis when your efficiency is maximum, and this is the expression for the maximum efficiency that is given as cos of theta plus phi plus one upon cos of theta minus phi plus one. And normal reaction is or uh, means normal resultant force is taken as F one by cos alpha one is equal to F two by cos alpha two. So in this way, for this uh, derivation part, we have to take that values by knowing the corresponding values, we will be getting the. Resultant forces. Thank you.